Hello guys and welcome back to another Emma Creator tutorial. Today we're actually going to be doing something a little bit different. I got a green light from Clemen to basically get a building series uh, for related with M Creator started. So we're going to be starting those on Mondays and then on Fridays we will have our regular procedure and um, content tutorials for creating smaller and more complicated logical pro projects where Mondays will be more focused on the building aspect. Now there will be four videos per month um, that will basically have a part in each stage of the building process of a specific structure and uh, the first one that we're actually going to be starting on is how to basically create a dungeon from scratch and there's going to be custom content there's going to be um, the process of actually building the structure some tips with that and uh, then there will be more logical work on the third video and then the fourth video will basically be implementing it into the world and getting everything set up for that so there's uh, four major steps and uh, the first one that we're going to be focusing on today is the actual design and uh, detail work of the actual blocks in the dungeon itself. So uh, to start with I'm going to set just creative mode and then what I'm going to do is go and set it to peaceful so no extra monsters spawn in it just to be on the safe side. And uh, for the world options I'm going to set this to super flat and uh, that should be good enough. Uh, we don't need structures on because uh, we that will that can get in the way so we'll just have that disabled um, and uh, we should be good to go so we're just going to quickly go back we'll just say done and we'll name this um, dungeon and uh, then we'll set create world so this will only take a couple seconds and because it's a flat world it's going to render a lot quicker than a regular world as well and then we got a lot more space we can work with. All right, so first thing I like to do when I start working on a new flat world is just mark where the spawn point is. And I'm gonna turn down the audio for the blocks as well. So we're just gonna turn down the overall volume just so it's um, not as loud when I'm actually talking. All right, so there we go. That should be a lot quieter. Now. All right, so the first thing that we're gonna need to do is kind of figure out a palette of what we're gonna make our dungeon out of. So we have all these vanilla blocks. I don't have any actual blocks implemented yet. I'll be spending the week creating some custom blocks that we can decorate our structure with. But uh, for now, what I'm going to do is I'm going to just grab some stone bricks uh, because those are very dungeon, dungeon, <laughs> dungeon y blocks to actually work with. So we'll grab these blocks here, and we might want some stairs as well. Uh, we'll find some uh, stone brick stairs. We can use that for detailing work. And we're also going to need some mossy cobblestone. Uh, we can go with some. Uh, I don't know if there's mossy stone stairs. Is there. Yeah, we'll grab some of those. Uh, we're going to need another chest to put all this stuff in for our pallets. So we'll just place um, a chest down here, and then we'll start filling up some of the blocks that we've picked for our structure. So we have some mossy cobblestone, some of that. Uh, we want uh, some regular cobblestone for the flooring as well. And I think... Uh, we can go with probably, uh, let's see, we need cobblestone stairs. All right, so this will be a good thing to start with. Uh, we can always add to our palette if we want to. Uh, we need to figure out a general layout of the dungeon first. So one of the things that I was kind of thinking about, I have had a couple days to think about this, and I'm gonna, I'm, I was thinking about having a lower part kind of like this for the dungeon. So there will be like a chamber over here, a chamber over here, then there'll be a narrow hall hallway that goes down into a third chamber, kind of like the how the end um, 
uh, stronghold has for where the portal is. They usually have that long staircase down and stuff. And I was thinking something like that, but a lot more narrower and um, harder to fight mobs and stuff like that. And then we could have like some loot over on these two sides or something like that as well. So that's kind of like the general idea that I wanted to go with. So let's start working on that. We'll grab some of our building blocks. I want to get the flooring in first. So I'm going to just grab some of these and then we will start working on the flooring. So there isn't any particular way to do this without world edit. So you just have to kind of figure out a system that works for you that will kind of um, be easier for you to randomize things. I generally place down a the floor grid first to basically design the hallways and stuff like that. And now the narrow way, uh, we'll probably do a one block um, hallway that goes like this. So that will be pretty hard to fight things off generally. So we're just going to kind of build this out kind of like that. Uh, we want to work with uneven numbers. So uh, it's even for the hallway, right? So our room would be about this big if we went with that. I want it a little bit bigger. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to go a little bit like that. And then let's test, uh, see how much this is going to be for the size. Now we have to take in consideration that there will be a section for the actual walls too. So this will be actually how big the room is in total. So I'm going to actually add a couple more onto these sides and then we're going to see basically where we got for the um, part here. Yeah, that should be big enough now. Um, yeah, that's uh, well, we also have to con take in consideration of the other wings too, right? So if we go out a couple more blocks, then we can put in probably that for this part. All right, so this is going to be on a lower level, right? So let's start working on getting this down. We know that that's going to be where the part goes down here so that's going to be there and that will kind of go out like that all right so now that we got that all set up let's start working on bringing this down so we're just going to use regular cobblestone stairs for this and then we're going to kind of lay out some of these blocks so we kind of get an idea where everything is going and we're just going to kind of repeat this pattern until we get down to the ground floor and we're going to go like that and this will be our floor for that part here. We're going to update that with uh, some mossy stone bricks and stuff when we actually get a chance. Now we don't actually need the parts right here that's all going to be walls so that could just sit like that for now. Alright so now that we got that done uh, we want probably about here and along this point here so one two and then we'll go this way and we need to count how many blocks this is actually going to be so one two three four five six seven eight nine ten eleven so we need eleven blocks in uh total so we'll go one two three four five six seven eight nine ten eleven so that'll be our first part of the dungeon now we also have to take in consideration the maximum structure size. So this is 11 blocks, which isn't too big, but we also have to keep in a 32 by 32 by 32 area. Now the height won't be an issue. Um, depending if we go outside this particular part, it might become an issue. So if we hit uh, F3 and uh, then we'll hit G, and then we can kind of see where our grid is for our chunks. Now, um, we didn't really centralize this, but we can do that still. Uh, well, to an extent, uh, it's going to be an uneven number. So we're going to actually use the clone command to move this a little bit. So we're actually going to go over here, place that like that, and then we're going to go uh, clone and then we're going to copy the coordinates for that part 
And to basically get the coordinates of the block that you're looking at, you can just hit tab and it will autofill that part out. So then what we're going to do is we're just going to move over here a couple chunks and uh, we need to figure out where the axis is. So I'm going to actually put the center of the block um, roughly right here. And I'm just going to place that block here and then I'm going to fill in that and that should sort of center it. <laughs> all right, uh, just give me a second to fix all of this out and I forgot to count blocks that way so we'll just fix that in just a sec. So one of the things that you can do to fix things if you misplace things, now there's an undo command but you can uh, use the fill command and you can set it to air and that will replace the um, basically selection to something else. Now uh, we need to actually figure out where our, how, how wide our blocks are. So one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, and then nine. So uh, nine plus nine is 18. So it's probably about 17 blocks in width so we need to kind of calculate that when we actually place it down so uh, one we'll count that as one two three four five six seven eight nine that's the place that we're going to want to basically paste it in so we'll just uh, go up to and then we'll update this coordinates so it's pretty much center now um, now because it's an uneven number it's going to be off centered off centered by one block that's just the way structures are going to have to be so uh, we got most of our chunks now all set up now the one thing that we need to keep in mind is 32 chunks is going to be this these four blocks right here so if we were to go outside of the four blocks then it's going to basically have some issues so we have to kind of figure out what's going to work best for our structure itself now because of this it's outside of the chunks we might have to shrink the blocks just a little bit on the inner part. This will work fine. Um, we'll have the other parts that we can basically work with. So there's gonna be some sacrifices that we have to make to make things work, obviously. So I'm just gonna shrink this by two blocks and that should bring it to the square. Maybe it's not exactly square. We'll check it out in just a second. Okay, so let's change the time, set day, and then we can get some light in here. All right, that does not look square to me, so I'm actually gonna increase it by that one block that we have. And that should be square. Yeah, that's perfect, all right. So those are the size of the room that we're gonna basically go with. And uh, we need probably about, so this is about one, two, three, four, five, so it's about 11 blocks in total, right? So let's go over here and we have three, four, five, six. Uh, that should be a total of five. Uh, let's just quickly test that. Oh, hold on a second here. All right, that should be actually a little bit smaller side should be shrunken there we go all right so there should be four on that side four on that side perfect four on this side and four on that side and then we'll go one two three four five one two three four and that'll bring us right to this edge part and then we'll go this way and connect that up like so and then we'll go this way and fill this in now remember we're going to actually be updating all this um, main blocks for our structure to be a mixture of cobblestone and mossy cobblestone. So once we got that part done we can start working on this part over here. So we need um, probably, I'm just going to make sure that's the same, I don't think that's the same. So there's five here and six over here. Okay, so one, two, three. I'm not sure if that's gonna be actually the right size. 
Um, we might need to shrink it a little bit because we're right on the edge right there. So we might have to make a compromise for the size. So we'll go one, two, three, four, and then four, and then five, one, two, three, four. Yeah, we'll need to go a little bit smaller on this side. That's okay. Um, no big deal. So one, two, three, four, and then we'll connect this up like that. So that'll be our main room here. And, um... The next major step is to actually get the mossy cobblestone and get the um, walls all set up. <clears throat> okay, so that will be basically our layout for the actual dungeon. It's a little bit off-centered, but that's just the way it has to be. Uh, we can shrink this actually one block in, so to do that what we can do is go um, clone coordinates and just clone this part. And then what we'll do is we'll move this in one just so it's even. And it can't overlap, so we'll replace and then we'll hit force and then we'll move it over. Alright, so then we'll just shrink this by one and now it should be mostly even. Alright, so let's uh, start working on the making the cobbles, mossy cobblestone. Now, for my technique for making it random, I literally just kind of go like this until the majority of the blocks are about 50-50%. There isn't any actual particular way to know if it's about 50-50%, but um, I'm sure you can actually do it through custom blocks and make it random um, when the blocks are added and stuff to the world. Um, that would be one way of doing it if you have your own custom blocks. When it comes to vanilla though, it's going to be, you just have to kind of basically manually randomize it and this is probably the best way of doing it. You just kind of place it down in an ordin, ordin, a non-structured pattern and it turns out generally pretty good. Uh, I've been doing that for paths and stuff for a long time and it seemed to work well. Uh, I got the idea from World Edit, how they basically structured their uh, blocks and just kind of picked up some techniques along the way. All right, so we'll just kind of go like this and we'll fill in this a little bit over here as well. All right, and then we have that lower part to work on as well, which won't take too long. Now for this, I want to kind of just fill out uh, some parts like that just to make it not as even. And the stairs will have to be figured out. Uh, these are going to actually be walls. Uh, we'll replace that like that, maybe that one. And then we'll just fill in some of the bottom parts here. That's just about good. Uh, we'll go like that, kind of fill in this center part. All right, so that's basically what we got so far. Uh, now we can start working on just finishing up the stairs. So I'm gonna actually put some mossy cobblestone here, some mossy cobblestone there, and that should be good. Um, now we can start working on the actual walls. So if we go back over here, we can select our other palette for the walls. And that will be our stone bricks, our other bricks here, our cracked stone bricks, our mossy stone bricks, and that should be good. So let's go back over here, and I'm going to show you some tips on creating some wall designs with stone bricks and stuff like that. So let's get into that part. All right, so first things first, we're going to use some stairs for decoration for the walls. We have some mossy cobblestones, some decoration for these parts, and some cracked stone bricks as well. So 
As far as the overall idea of designing something, um, I'm going to turn off the actual chunk border so we don't we can actually see how things are going. So I was thinking about having like decoration along the base like this. We could do like decoration like that. And then what we'll do is we'll have the upper and lower part um, basically like this where our inner part will be mainly the um, this, the actual cracked stone bricks and stuff like that. So we'll go like this and then we'll kind of go around a little bit and we'll bring it up like that and then we'll go this way and back around here and then we'll head up to this part here. Alright, so another thing that I wanted to do was there is going to be a little small opening here and we're just going to fill this in partly with some stone bricks and stuff um, just to kind of get it to this part. Now this is where our actual opening will be for when we actually start making condition for the structure itself. So I want it to kind of get a little bit more open so we have more space to work with and for that it'll make more sense when we actually get to designing the actual thing but this will basically connect to the cave when we get to there that point all right so let's uh quickly time set d and we will quickly uh start working on the actual stone bricks so we want to go kind of up like this and we're just going to go and start on this wall here just so we save some time and then I'll show you the tips that uh, we can do to make the walls a little bit more decorated. So let's uh, use this corner piece as an example. And we'll go along here as well just so it's a little bit even. Alright, so we have a basic wall like this. We have some decoration along the bottom. And what I was thinking about was having an inner roof like this. So this will kind of go around like that. And I'll kind of decorate the inner part of the ceiling. Now we have all that wall space that we can basically work with. Uh, for that uh, we should probably add some random cracked parts like this uh, so it looks more natural or should I, I say more dungeony and uh, we'll kind of just replace that. So that will basically be our first layer for our cracked stone bricks and then we have our mossy stone bricks which we can fill in some of the other spots and decorate some of the other parts like this. So we can do something like that and that just brings it a lot more to its character and gives it a little bit more um, detail work. Now there's another thing that we can do. Now this is a basic overall texture and stuff but stone bricks actually have kind of a unique um, texture that you can work with. Now they're perfectly aligned right on the seams here so you could actually take a part like this and make it look like it's been chopped out. So for example the upper part would be good for bricks missing and the lower part you can actually play around with so if you go like this you can make it look like there's a few bricks missing as well. So you can do that with a, a few different ports a few, di few different points like that, like the corners. Um, there's some other parts that you can work with. Um, the top parts are a little bit harder because we're going to have some random blocks up here. So um, we're actually going to just let it kind of be on the face like that. Uh, but when we're on the bottom parts, we can actually work with um, some of the you know more detailed parts like that. So like that would be a pretty cool interesting design here. It kind of wraps around the corner and we can use that along with um, some other techniques like decoration and stuff when we actually get to designing the actual props and stuff. So I mean that's taking it to an entire new level with the blocks missing and stuff like that. So I'm going to quickly build up all the walls around the structure and then we'll basically continue on from there just so I'll be back when I get that all done. Alright so we got most of the detail work all set up we got the inner parts all done so there's some bricks missing 
as we go up here there's uh, two different chambers that way and then we got this part over here which will be connecting to a cave or something so that will be the basic of it uh, now what we need to do is kind of just fill in the parts around here this will make it a little bit easier to work with when we actually um, do fill it in with some structure voids so we'll fill this in like that and then what we'll do is we will start working on the roof part uh, for the actual structure now if there's any bats or anything in here you probably want to make sure that there isn't uh, there isn't any particular way to keep them out because they are they spawn at lower levels and stuff like that uh, on the on this particular part so I don't think there's actually any particular way to keep them out completely but um, before you save your structure and stuff like that you can basically just go through it make sure there's no bats and stuff in here so it will get dark that's the only issue when you actually do fill these in so when you do do that uh, you might want to light them up for the time being so no bats and stuff um, spawn in here so what we can do is we can grab some uh, torches or something like that or even better we can grab some sea lanterns just so we can actually keep this place basically lit up so uh, sea lanterns and then we'll just place that down in the center just so it's all lit up so we don't need to worry about that we'll place one in the intersection here and yeah they're already spawning in here so we'll just kind of light this up all right and uh, we'll go over onto this side and we'll light this up as well all right, so that should keep the bats from spawning in here. Uh, we will quickly just take care of this one. We can get a sword out and we'll just kill that. All right, so that's good. Uh, we got our basic part all set up. Now we just have the part down here to fill in. And uh, then we can start working on the actual structure voids that will make up this uh, main structure. And um, that will allow other blocks around it to basically fill in. So we'll just fill this up so it's a little bit easier to work with. Now, you don't necessarily need to do this, but um, it'll just make our selection for our structure voids a lot easier to work with when we do do this. So I'm just going to kind of fill out this randomly, and then we'll fill out the rest in with some stone or regular cobblestone and that will make it a little bit easier to get up and down for that part now this is a little bit of a trickier area so I'm actually going to fill this in with some stone bricks and that will make the selection for when we actually set the um, structure voids a little bit easier to fill in so that'll be good like that all right so now we got a very square structure and a more dynamic interior all we need to do is basically set up selections of where we're going to be putting our structure voids so uh, an idea would be to kind of mark out sections like this and then what we can do is fill this in for this particular part here so we're going to go all the way down to this part right here and all this space here is uh, basically um, going to need to be filled in with structure voids so what we're going to do is go slash fill and then we're going to select our selection for this corner using that tab trick and then we'll go over here and then we'll select this part and then we'll fill that in with uh, structure and then structure voids and then we're going to replace air and that will basically fill in all this with air. So we just make sure to remove any cobblestone blocks that you have for markers because then they won't basically get placed down. All right, so that brings it up to this point. And then we have basically uh, this section right here that we need to work on. So we're gonna go from here and then we're going to go uh, down to this part. So slash fill. And then we'll select that corner and then we'll select this corner and then structure void replace 
error, and then we'll copy that, control C, and then we'll fill this in like that. And all this should be structure voids now. Yeah, all the way up to here. Oh, yeah, up to this point here. So all the air. And we'll just do this for most of the structure um, for this part here. We can also just use the fill command, I think. So slash fill, and then we'll select our corner. And then we'll go over here and then we'll select this corner, structure, void, and that should replace any cobblestone that we have placed down to. So we'll do that for all of the bottom. And we'll need to go here. So fill. And then we'll fill this part. Alright, so that part's done. So we have a complete row up to this part for where we filled things out. Now we need to basically fill in this part here. So slash fill. And then we'll copy that. And then we'll go over to this part. And then we'll fill this in. Structure voids. So we have all this area filled in with structure voids now up to the floor line here. So now that we got that part done, what we can do is we can basically fill in from here to, because this is all floor on this side, we can fill in basically from here to there. Uh, there will be that part where there's that walkway down. We'll have to clean that out. But uh, if we go from here and slash fill and it will save us some time for what we need to do. So we'll go over here. Uh, for this one though, we are gonna want to replace so we don't remove any of our structure and replace air. And that will fill all the blocks right between here to structure voids. Now we will have some structure voids in our main structure that we need to basically clean out right here uh, because it goes down to another level. So now that we got that done, what we can do is we can basically fill in these sections, slash fill, and then we will go over here and then we'll select that, structure, void, and that should be all set up now. And then we'll go over here and select between here and here. Now what this will do is it will basically allow vanilla blocks to be overwritten uh, for the area that it basically spawns in. So it'll make it a little bit easier when um, we actually start working on bringing in the structure. So all the blocks around will uh, turn to the vanilla ones that are already naturally generated. So fill and then we'll go like this and then we'll go over to this point. Actually, we could go up more. So to here, actually, while we're actually here, we can just fill in that entire area. So we'll go like that. We'll just update this coordinate. And then we'll go uh, structure void and we'll replace all that. So all this should be structure void now. Uh, we have this cavity in here that we still need to basically fill in. Uh, it goes down to here, so we'll have to kind of fill that in here to here. So fill. And then we'll fill this in. So that, that's one side pretty much done. Uh, we still have this part up here to do, so we'll do that right now. Oh. Okay, we need to fix that. We just removed one structure void. There we go. 
Uh, if you place a block in the same spot as a structure void, it will basically re replace it with air when you break it. So it's important to make sure that you can place it back. So fill, we'll fill this in with structure voids. And then we just need to fill in this part here. So right here to here. So that's done, and I think we have this lower part that we still need to work on. So I think the lowest part is here, and then we need to go to something like here, I think. Yeah, about there. So slash fill. Wish there was uh, that barrier mechanism so you could actually hold this and then see where the structure voids are. Maybe Minecraft can add that in the future. So slash uh, structure voids and that should be all set up now. Alright so that's basically where the structure voids all are set up. Now when we actually go to import this into the structure like the world themselves all these little blocks here that highlight are going to turn to vanilla blocks that are in the area that are naturally generated. So basically we've just created an entire grid around our structure to basically fill in with um, vanilla blocks and stuff like that. So it's underneath, it's uh, in the cavities around here. That'll just make it look a little bit nicer when it does generate and it'll kind of go with the terrain and stuff like that rather than fill it in, filling it in with air like what we have here. So uh, yeah, that's basically all that we're going to be doing today. Uh, we've built the structure, so next episode we'll do some detail work. We'll get some of the props and stuff that I made, and all the props will be able to be downloaded. They're going to be completely open source and stuff like that, so we can start decorating some of these rooms and stuff like that. So it'll make it look a lot nicer when we get to that point. And then it'll be logic after that the next week and then the week the final week that we work on this we'll be actually bringing it into M Crater and getting that all um, saved and then we'll basically make it so it's a structure underground and stuff like that. So outside of that, that's all the time that I have for today. If you're new to my channel, don't forget to subscribe, comment down below, rate the video, and I will see you guys next time. Thanks for watching. Peace out.